Hey guys, OG Albina here, bringing you another Crown Tundra, um, you know, Sword and Shield DLC type discussion video. But today what we're going to be doing is uh, something that I've done in the past with, you know, standard tiers and stuff like that in a draft league setting for um, Pokemon that have already been released in, uh, you know, the Galar decks and the uh, Isle of Armor DLC and stuff like that. But what we're going to be doing today is going over each and every one of the uh, new returning Pokemon coming back in the Crown Tundra DLC that uh, we know via some, you know, data mines and leaks and stuff like that. Um, that's going to be coming back and we're going to be putting them in subsequent tiers in which I think they'll fit in in a Galar Dex draft league setting. Um, singles, obviously, as well. So first off, I do want to mention that um, Dra I mean, Jack slash Gray uh, Gravy, he... Uh, he did this video before I did, so I'm going to link his down in the description below. I have done videos like this in the past, um, but he does as well, and I think his was very good. So I'll definitely link his in the description below. Please go give it some support. Go check it out. Um, drop a like, drop him a sub. It'd be really nice to you. But yeah, we're going to be going over these. Um, this is going to be a long video, so let's go ahead and jump into it. But before we do one last thing, I do want to mention only a good 40, 50% of you guys that are watching the videos each and every time they come up are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you want to do me a huge favor, hit that sub button. It's completely free. It's very easy and you can always change your mind later. I'd really appreciate your support um, as we're pushing towards a good 400 subs, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, that'd be obviously super amazing, but let's go ahead and jump into why we are here. Let's go ahead and jump and start tearing these. And like I said, uh, this isn't going to be in a national deck setting. This isn't going to be talking about, you know, like Megas, Zemus and stuff like that. This is going to be strictly Galar decks, mostly a Wi-Fi league setting as that's predominantly what we upload here on this channel i uh i actually probably play more nat decks like you know showdown type stuff um off screen but uh on the channel at least we're mostly uploading wi-fi content so i figured it'd probably be smartest to um you know look at it from that perspective and stuff like that talk about what these ones do how good i think they are you know and things like that so let's go ahead and jump in we're obviously gonna you know give a quick overview of what these mods do obviously and how good they are what they do so jumping into it first we have the nidos now um if you know me you'll know i love the nidos i think the nidos are absolutely ridiculous um they're some of my favorite mods to use in draft needle queen is probably one of my most used mods ever um it's they're both very very strong uh offensively very deceptively too just the access to sheer force makes they're very mediocre offensive stats um look a lot stronger especially in conjunction with the coverage that they do get phenomenal pokemon they're great reliable rockers they both get access to t spikes uh, and they both have great natural bulk. They're both great cocoa checks. They're like, especially like just that nice, you know, ground type electric pivot um, to, you know, soak those up. Uh, and obviously I think they're the best cocoa checks in the game, though Coco did get a new toy. Uh, one of its many new toys that actually helps it beat the needles pretty uh, decisively, depending on how your opponent preps and plays around it. Uh, but regardless, I think the needles are absolutely amazing. Some of the best grounds in the format. However, um, as much as I really want to put them in like a tier two, I don't think that we can do that with all the big beefed up things we're getting back. Maybe if you threw them in the last DLC, I could see like, you know, the needle sneaking in as a really, really low tier two. Personally, I think they both belong right here in tier three. Um, I think personally that Needle Queen is better than Needle King. The power difference isn't that much different and Needle Queen is pretty damn bulky, um, has a little bit more defensive utility. So I prefer it, but I think both are great. I've used both to great success and I think they're super dope Pokemon. Um, Next up, we have Jinx. Jinx isn't a Pokemon I'm super familiar with. It's a Pokemon I've used a lot. I did use Smoochum a lot in LC and Gen 7 draft, which was definitely a pretty dope mon. Um, but Jinx is a decent little wall breaker, especially if your opponent has a lackluster stealer. You can pressure it. Uh, you can put it to sleep with some lovely kiss shenanigans. It gets access to Nasty Plot and Psychic, Psy Shock, Ice Beam, stuff like that. It just doesn't have the greatest coverage to hit those bulky steals, which are really going to pivot in on those Ice and Psychic moves and stuff like that. Um, I think it's a little too good to throw it in Tier 5, but I think it's definitely a lower end Tier 4 Pokemon. Uh, that's at least kind of where I sit with that thing at the moment. Uh, same thing with um, uh, Omastar, in my personal opinion. Uh, it's a great Pokemon, by the way. I, I think Omastar is a phenomenal Pokemon. It gets access to both spikes and rocks. It gets Shell Smash. It gets Shell Swim. Uh, Swift Swim. So it definitely has a lot of utility. It's just, it's it's a it's a mon that has, you know, a lot of niche uses, but isn't necessarily amazing in all of them. I'm not drafting it almost to be my Swift Swim user. I'm not drafting it to be you know, uh, you know, this very reliable hazard setter that's going to come every single week and get a rocks and spikes and stuff like that. Though I think it's actually very good at that. I think people sleep on it. Uh, it's just not a Pokemon you necessarily see draft too often. One, because it is kind of meh on those offensive sides. You know, there are better Shell Smashers. There are better Swift Swim users. And uh, it's very hard to justify drafting it as a water because you're probably going to need a defensive one on top of that. And, you know, double water isn't that bad, but there's so many good waters in the format that 
Um, it's often very tough to try and justify drafting an Omastar on your team unless you really need that flying resist or, you know, something like that and that rock typing as well. I'm just not the best, unfortunately. I'm going to say the same thing with Cobbletops. Now, when it comes to Swift Swim, I think Cobbletops is a phenomenal Swift Swim abuser. This thing is terrifying. With an SD up, nothing really switches into uh, Water plus Rock Stab, like at all. It's very, very, very difficult to switch into. However, um, again, it, it falls into the category of there are a lot of Pokemon that just do it a little bit better, especially offensive Pokemon. Though I think on rain, this thing has incredible value, especially in like a tier four pick. I wouldn't go as far to jump it up to tier three, but I think it's a phenomenal Pokemon nonetheless and definitely deserves some kind of recognition in some way, shape and form. So I definitely think Kabutops is a, is a pretty solid tier four pick. Next, we're going to jump into uh, my favorite fossil of the three, a Pokemon I absolutely love. Um, I love Mega Aerodactyl, but this is going to be regular Aerodactyl we're talking about. And we're going to put regular Arrow in tier three. Now, reasoning I have Arrow in tier three. One, I think it, I actually think it's a very good Pokemon last gen. I really enjoyed Aerodactyl. I think it's very solid. Uh, it has good offensive coverage. It's incredibly fast. That 130 speed tier is incredibly nice. Um, really, really being able to take advantage of a lot of slower teams and, you know, being able to run adamant in a lot of weeks, which is cool. It has good coverage. It can go mixed to an extent. If you're playing a Ferrothorn, you want to run Fire Blast, you can run Fire Blast. And it's going to do a lot of damn damage, which is dope. Really fast Rocker, really fast Taunter. It's a phenomenal anti-lead Pokemon. And, uh, you know, it, getting new toys this gen too is what really, really, really set over the edge. One, it's going to be heavy duty boots. I know you don't really think of Aerodactyl in a really bulky way, but Aerodactyl is one of the best torn checks in the game. Aerodactyl uh, has good defensive utility in its typing and in the fact that because you're so fast, you can afford to run a lot of bulk on this thing and, um, you know, still be fast enough to outspeed the things you need to outspeed, which is really dope. So I think like a boots arrow could, you know, really, really help it out and, you know, bulkier sets and stuff like that, especially with the fact that it got um dragon dance this gen i think dragon dance on arrow is super dope not only being able to boost his speed to where scarfers are not outspeeding it anymore but boosting that you know pretty mediocre attack stat to a pretty astronomical level is super super nice in all honesty so i think arrow getting dragon dance is dope because it also got access to dual wing beat which gives us a better flying stab than aerial ace and wing attack which is pretty subpar now on mega arrow that's a big deal uh mega arrow taking advantage of dual wing beat is super nasty but Regular arrow definitely still really appreciates it. It also got access to Rock Blast, which makes it a better anti-lead. If you're playing a Rabombi, if you're playing a Galvantula, and you know they're going to try and get a turn one uh, webs on you because they have their sash and they can live that Stone Edge, you can Rock Blast them away and, you know, be in a pretty solid spot. So I think uh, arrow is a really, really, really phenomenal Pokemon. I think people definitely sleep on it as a tier three pick, uh, but I think it, uh, you know, doesn't deserve the sleep that it, uh, you know, it, it doesn't deserve to be slept on. It doesn't deserve the sleep that it gets. Yikes. Interesting, Owen. Um, but yeah, that's going to be Arrow. Next up, we're kind of staying in that tier three, tier four range. We're going to go with Articuno. I'm going to put Articuno on tier four. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, damn, this thing got boots, though. You don't have to worry about, you know, keeping rocks off the field for anymore. Yes, 100%. I think Articuno has great value. I think it's a great defogger. I think it's a great, um, you know, just general news. It's a great bulky pivot. Has a fat spread F set. Um, it gets access to U-turn and, you know, tailwind and things like that. Uh, it does get stuffed by steals and stuff like that, which can be pretty annoying, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. Uh, it, it's a very, very solid value Pokemon out of tier four. However, I think the fact that it's just kind of hardballed by steals and that four times weakness to rocks, basically pigeonholing you into a boots roll this gen is, you know, a little bit less than optimal, especially when there are so many good flying types, especially coming back in this DLC alone, that it's going to be very, very tough for opposing teams to, uh, you know, deal with and stuff like that. So I'm going to put uh, Articuno in tier four. I still think it's a very good tier four. It just, you know, uh, there might be a little bit more hype around it because of the boots option than, you know, is really, uh, is really deserved. Now we're going to have our first Pokemon jumping all the way up to tier one. And that is big Zapdos. Now Zapdos was already great. Zapdos was already a phenomenal Pokemon the guaranteed tier one by far. This gen, though, it's a lot like Arrow, where it got just so many new toys that make it so much better, um, but, you know, to a whole new degree. Uh, one, it got access to boots, so now you don't have to worry about that Rock's weakness in Zapdos, making an even better defogger, which it was already phenomenal at before. And then this gen, it finally got access to Flying Special Sap in Hurricane and Air Slash, which is so good for Zapdos, you have no idea. This, uh, the covers that this, uh, you know, really offers it between this you know, it's electric stab and then like heat wave. It gets U-turn and volt switch and baton pass if you really need to. It gets agility, static, 
and pressure are both phenomenal abilities depending on what you want to go for. You can go for like annoying Thunderwave sets. You can go for annoying like sub-toxic sets, um, you know, discharge spam. A bunch of options like that to where Zapdos is a legitimate threat now. Not only, you know, is it still that potent defensive threat that it was in generations prior, um, even better actually with the access to boots now, uh, but now it can really, really take advantage of that 125 special attack stat and throw off max special attack hurricanes and air slashes and really be a big threat. I think Zapdos is something you're going to see a lot on rain teams. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of Zapdos on rain team because being able to spam that hurricane and also getting access to weather ball this gen um, is absolutely amazing for it. So I think Zapdos um, becomes, you know, goes from like a solid tier one to one of the better tier ones in the format. Like I think this Pokemon is absolutely amazing. Now, next up, we have Moltres. Moltres, I'm going to put in tier three. I think Moltres is an amazing Pokemon. I genuinely love it. I think it's a better Talon Flame. Uh, not speed wise, obviously, but it gets access to a lot of the same stuff. It is going to be special mostly, though, which is, uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, a little bit less than, uh, you know, the Talon Flame that can go mix, but it's a lot stronger from the special side. That's for damn sure. You get Fire Blast and Flamethrower and Hurricane. It gets access to U Turn for Momentum. Uh, Roost and Defog, Sub Pressures, it's annoying. Flame Body, it's a great bulky pivot. And the fact that this thing does not have to worry about rocks as much as what we're talking about with, honestly, these next mods, uh, you know, after this is absolutely amazing. I think Moltres is going to be much better than it was this gym. I don't think it propels you to tier two levels because it is going to be pigeonholed a lot into that um, boots roll. But again, if you have solid recovery or you know your opponent has mad rockers or rockers that aren't very good in the matchup, I think that uh, Moltres can potentially be, you know, really, really annoying in the versatility it can offer. Again, it's very, very strong. There's a lot of options for it to do, uh, you know, really wreak havoc on an opponent's team. Another Yet another benefactor of the heavy duty boots item is going to be Dragonite. Now, Dragonite, again, big, big improvement from last gen. I know you're losing out on that Z Fly, that Z Fly nuke option, which is unfortunate. But now you have to keep into account that this thing has access to heavy duty boots, which is a guaranteed multi scale. That is a guaranteed multi scale. And if you don't know what multi scale does, it uh, lessens damage that this Pokemon takes when it is at full HP. And part of the way you would get around that before. It was going to be access to stealth rocks and, you know, being able to get that 25% on the chip switch. And now that it doesn't have to worry about that, Dragonite is a menace, man. Um, you're going to have to deal with that thing pretty much getting off a guaranteed Dragon Dance. And you're going to have to deal with it in another way afterwards, which is honestly very, very scary. Uh, not only that, but it also has, uh, you know, really, really fat sets that it can run. I think like Toxic Dragonite, like Toxic Roost Dragonite is so annoying to deal with, especially being the fact that this thing uh, doesn't have to be physical. It can be special. It has great coverage on that side of the um, spectrum. It gets great access to like, you know, um, a bunch of special coverage moves. It gets access to Hurricane. Uh, and stuff like that. It's definitely very, very annoying. And I believe with the ability castles, it can actually run heal bill with multi scale now. So that's obviously a great, great buff to Dragonite. Um, another thing that we have to keep into account that it also got physical flying stab and dual wing beat. Now it had fly before, but that's obviously not a reliable move, uh, especially being that it's two turn and you can't always, you can't pop that Z move anymore. But now that I got access to dual wing beat, uh, physical dragon Dance sets are actually much, much better in this generation because of the heavy duty boots and access to that flying stab. Uh, it's really hard to switch into dragon flying and ground because it does get access to earthquake. It's really hard or superpower because I believe it gets access to that. Um, as well. So it's going to be really hard to pivot into Dragonite and, you know, deal with the Dragonite set even more than last generations, I think, uh, in my personal opinion. So this thing is going to be absolutely amazing. I think it's going to be much better than last gen. Honestly, um, I've had a couple buddies who've used it in Ad Deck Showdown Leagues and they have very much enjoyed it. I believe it's Silver. Yeah, Silver Smasher used it and he absolutely loved Dragonite. Uh, there's going to be another Dragon Flying Pokemon that I am super, super excited that got, like, you know, very similar bus, but we'll talk about that one here in a little bit. Regardless, I think Dragonite's going to be an absolute just powerhouse in this, uh, you know, in this limited next Wi-Fi type setting. Next up, we have Crobat, though. I think Crobat's an amazing Pokemon. We're going to throw it probably in Tier 3, though. Uh, Crobat's a Pokemon you serially, uh, serially see in Tier 3. It has a great speed tier. Um, it has Super Fang and Taunt, so it's a great stall breaker. Brave Bird is always, you know, pretty, pretty spammable. The access to Heavy Duty Boots is going to be great for it, just like every other flying type ever. Um, that really does help it out. Jeez, how many flying types have we gone over? One, two, three, four, five, six, six flying types. So that's the sixth time I've said heavy duty boots. Um, so definitely a really, really solid mod nonetheless. It also got access to Hurricane, which is going to be a greater option for that thing on the special side if you want to go with the nasty plot set because it does have access to, you know, Sludge Bomb and Giga Drain and Heat Wave and things like that. So Crobat's a Pokemon I personally love using. 
And I think it's great that it got these, like, you know, nice little quality of life improvements, making it, you know, all the better, despite, again, and not really being able to throw off those Z moves, because it was a pretty decent Z captain in Gen 7, uh, if you want, if you need a lower tier one. Now, we're going to go into tier 2 for the first time, we're going to put Raikou. Now, originally going into Generation 8, I didn't think Raikou was going to be very good at all. I thought Raikou was going to suck, uh, because like most electric types, losing the access to hidden power made it to work hard. Ground types are pretty much a hard wall, just because electric types seriously don't get very good coverage. But they went and gave, uh, they decided, they turned around and gave Raikou Scald. The fact that they gave Raikou Scald makes it honestly even a little bit better. Being able to spam Scald, nab burns, uh, you know, still be that sub mine threat, still be that scarf threat. Uh, with Volt Switch and things like that. Uh, it gets extra screens and Shadow Ball, and it can run Aura Sphere without being a rash nature now because of the Nature Mints. Like, I think this makes Raikou a very, very good Pokemon. It has a phenomenal speed tier in 115. It gives you a good flying resist. There's a lot of things that Raikou can do for a build that uh, are incredibly slept on. So I think it getting Scald literally catapulted from potentially like bottom tier 3, tier 4 Pokemon to a certified tier 2 threat. So I think uh, Raikou is going to be an absolute threat. Now, I'm going to do Suicune first, because I'm still kind of deciding in the back of my mind where I want to put Entei. Uh, we're going to do Suicune, though. Suicune's definitely a tier 2 Pokemon. Uh, this is uh, what me and, my, me and my buddies call the uh, the new player, the new player slayer. New players often don't know how to deal with Suicune, because it's very annoying. It's going to pressure stall you. It's going to sub call mind all over your team. You're going to run out of ways to hit it, and it's going to win the game a lot of the time. Suicune is such a centralizing mod in prep alone. I think that... Um, you know, really catapults to a guaranteed tier two. Even if you're not bringing Suicune, your opponent's going to be so scared of Crocoon and Vincoon and all those things, just stalling them to death. Their teams are going to be very much so tailored to do that. And you can even take advantage of in that way. But even if they do, it's still going to win some matchups on its own. It is such a good Pokemon. And there are other, you know, utility options that I can get. I think a, like AV Suicune is definitely a really, really solid mod. Um, and a really, really slept on set. and does get access to Mirror Coat. And it's ridiculously bulky. This thing is so ridiculously fat the only thing holding it back is no reliable recovery but if you have you know uh, sufficient wish passers and you have uh you know obviously rest is an option and you know just lefties protect uh you know stuff like that it's also gonna you know residually get you up over the game too i think that makes it very solid and i think suicune is uh definitely a really really good pokemon i think nobody uh nobody's really gonna disagree with me on that one it, it beats so many of its checks and counters alone just by pressure stalling them out and being a general nuisance. So definitely a really fun mod to use, not a fun mod to play. Now we have Entei here and Entei's tough. I'm personally, I I'm not an Entei guy. I'm, I'm really not an Entei guy, unfortunately. Uh, I think it's strong and I think in the right matchup, it can be a big, big threat, but I think it's checked by a lot of common things in the format and it can be a little bit lackluster, though I do think it got a little bit better one with the access of boots because I just don't appreciate rocks. If you want a choice variant, boots are definitely a very viable option. Another thing that I did get access to is uh, being able to run Jolly Sacred Fire. Now, before, I believe Sacred Fire was uh, nature locked to a adamant nature via event. But now that we have the, uh, the nature mints, we can use Jolly Entei viably and still run that Sacred Fire. Flare Blitz also very much so hurts. It gets access to, I believe, Stomping Tantrum. I know it gets access to Stone Edge. Um, of extreme speed as well, which is obviously a very, very solid option, you know, priority, especially for banded sets. I don't know if that catapult is a tier two range though. Even in a limited dex, I personally think of Entei as a tier three Pokemon. And I think I'm gonna stick to those guns. I think it's a very solid tier three, um, but I think I, I, I might get a bunch of shit for this too. I, I really don't think it's tier two worth. I, I just personally don't. Now, you can see we have an Ubers tier. Um, I'm gonna put an S because that's actually annoying. Um, you see we have an Ubers tier here, obviously, kind of, uh, you know, just designating the mods that are going to be too good for standard draft, but are obviously going to be, you know, in the Ubers tier, or if you play in an Ubers draft setting like the BBL, um, then they're going to be all the way up there at the top, and obviously this next two mods are going to be there, and I actually think they got very, very, uh, you know, much better this gen, which I guess we can talk about a little bit when we come to the Ubers, uh, because I do have a little bit of Ubers draft experience, I've played in a fair few amount of, uh, you know, Ubers leagues on my, uh, you know, by myself. Uh, but boots for Ho-Oh -Oh and Lugia, disgusting. Lugia, um, obviously getting that guaranteed multi skill, like Dragonite, except using it to be much more of a fat, bulky nuisance. Uh, really, really scary, especially with a mon that, that, that's uh, that bulky and has like 110 base speed. Really disgusting. Lugia is an absolute menace. I hate playing against that thing. Your way of beating it is toxic, and that's it. So, excuse me. So Lugia is obviously a huge, huge threat. Um, as for Ho-Oh, -Oh, 
same deal except this thing gets regenerator and ho is already such a great pokemon if you could facilitate and you know have some good hazard control around it now the fact that you don't even really need to do that as long as you don't get it let it get knocked off and stuff like that disgusting and it also makes it a good defogger i can you know defog for the rest of its teammates uh you know without having to worry about the rocks itself which is dope sacred fire and brave bird and earthquake and you know a bunch of crazy options like that this thing is also ridiculously fast especially on the spadef side uh ho obviously just got leaps and bounds better with boots it's pretty much all you're gonna run you might run an occasional charty berry maybe an occasional choice ban but other than that you're just gonna be clicking um what do you call it you're just gonna be clicking sacred fire and brave bird and stuff like that and, uh, you know, just being a general nuisance to, uh, you know, the opposing team, which is obviously super dope. Um, I hope, okay, cool. I was making sure I, cl I clicked on Discord to respond to someone and I was scared it was gonna show it on the thing. Now, next up, we have Subtile. Now, as for new toys, I believe Subtile did get access to Dragon Dance, um, which is actually kind of cool for regular Subtile. I know it also gets access to Swords Dance and oftentimes when you see regular Subtile in draft, you're gonna see it trying to take advantage of some kind of terrain. So you're gonna see it with an unburdened seed set. Um, often with like a swords dance and acrobatics and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know how much Dragon Dance will really benefit it, but if you want to be, uh, you know, the guy to draft, you know, Sceptile on a regular team without terrain, it can help it out in that sense. I think it's definitely a tier four Pokemon. Decent Pokemon, but, uh, a, you know, really good speed tier. Uh, General Nuisance Sub Leech is actually very annoying because of its speed tier and how fast it is, but it's just not the best model in the world. Now, as for Blaziken, Blaziken got some great buffs, and I'm going to be talking about Blaze Blaziken. Speed Boost Blaziken is obviously an uber Pokemon. It's very good, and it's very hard to deal with. I'm going to be talking about Blaze because it's the Pokemon we often see the most in draft because we, uh, you know, often do implement complex bands and stuff like that, and like Smogon, and uh, Blaze Blaziken is a very good Pokemon, and I got some great new toys this gen. One being U-Turn, giving it a pivoting option other than Baton Pass because a lot of these either ban BP or, um, you know, limit to, it limits it to only Dry Pass. I think limiting to Dry Pass is definitely the move. Uh, but now the fact that you can U-turn and chip down your checks throughout the game as you, uh, you know, come in and out, uh, potentially setting up for an endgame where you can clean through, especially with Scarf sets, um, is really, really nice for Blaziken, honestly, especially with the amount of set, uh, sweeps, uh, switches it forces and stuff like that, and also got access to close combat, which is a little bit more spammable than high jump kick. Uh, doesn't have nearly as much of a downside if, uh, you know, the move doesn't work out. They pivot into a ghost type and you take 50% on the recoil because you miss, or you just miss because you're an unlucky guy like me. Uh, I think CC is uh, honestly a very, very nice option in a lot of matchups. I think this makes Scarf Blaziken a lot better. Like, I think it makes Scarf Blaziken very, very good in all honesty. So I think I'm going to put Blaziken in tier three still. Great Pokemon, but I think it's a lot better this gen for sure. Swampert, right in tier three as well. I think Swampert and Seismitoad are usually in the same tier. Swampert's a little bit bulkier. Seismitoad offers that Water Absorb Mon, but I think Swampert is, you know, phenomenal in its own right. It's incredibly bulky. It has extra roar for phasing. It's a great rocker. Um, it got access to Bulk Up and Liquidation this gen, which is obviously dope. It had access to Curse before, but Bulk Up's just kind of superior in all ways when it comes to Swampert. Liquidation is just a better waterfall if you're running a physical Swampert. So I think it's a nice little quality of life bust. I don't think it like breaks them on, but it's definitely very, very solid nonetheless. So we're gonna kind of start zooming through because we're getting to the mons that aren't necessarily as broken um like here in the middle of the list a lot of the hoe and stuff agron tier four uh it's a good utility steel type if you're gonna really need a budget steel uh banded head smashes are terrifying to switch into with that rocket ability i believe it's rocket that it gets regardless it's very very hard to switch into in the night niche matchups i remember i had agron in the low tier league one time and it absolutely killed it for me gets access to rock, po rock polish if you're playing against slower teams uh you know different stuff like that sturdy so obviously nice uh you know blanket uh check to a lot of things you can even run boots agron to guarantee to have your sturdy and you know potentially revenge something like that which can obviously be pretty dope and uh yeah agron's a nice little tier four pokemon tier five altaria uh i think defensive altaria got a little bit more use this gen uh obviously getting access to boots it's really bulky and annoying gets access to heal bell um it's just a nice annoying pivot in general it's a nice anti-rain option or just anti-weather option if you're really scared especially sun actually it's very good against sun in all honesty uh cloud nine obviously getting rid of the effects of weather and it just being bulky and annoying and having you know the option of, option of boots dragon Dance isn't great just because things so piss weak and it's not you know the strongest thing in the world mega alt definitely a different story but regular alt not so much, unfortunately. Uh, definitely a really, really cool mod, though, in Tier 5. I think it's definitely a little slept on. I'm going to put these guys right here in Tier 5 as well. I think Armaldo's, you know, a decent spinner, especially with access to boots this gen. It gets rocks. Uh, Cradelli's a nice, annoying rocker. I think it's actually pretty good on rain teams. It's a good water immunity, but I don't think they're anything more than Tier 5. 
unfortunately. Uh, definitely good utility mods. And again, every Pokemon we've talked about, I think actually has great utility. I think we're getting a lot of really, really solid Pokemon back in the grass setting. And I, I think that's something we have to stress a lot. There's a lot of really cool mods coming back and I'm really excited to try a lot of these out. Absol, I'm gonna put it in tier four. Now, um, I, I contemplate, I'm contemplating putting it in tier five. Losing Pursuit really sucks because that's one of Absol's niches. It's a very good Pursuit Trapper. It's very, uh, you know, strong in that, right? But it did lose that, but it's still very strong. It's Axe of Swords Dance and Sucker Punch and, you know, Knock Off and things like that. It has good special coverage as well, so you can go mix. It's a good wall breaker. It is very slow and, it's, uh, well, it's not very slow. It's pretty slow and it's uh, very frail. So uh, it's going to be very match dependent, you know, on how good Absol is going to be, but it's a good, strong offensive dark. And if you need a budget dark type so you don't lose the Reuniclusses of the world, then Absol is your guy. I think he's very solid in that end. And next up, we have Walrein. Walrein uh, is going to be in tier five. I love Walrein. Um, I know my buddy Nathan does as well, uh, <laughs> but it's it's unfortunately not the best Pokemon in the world. I think it access to Swords Dance this gym, which is actually a pretty cool buff for it. Uh, and it's a, you know, nice, nice, decent low tier water. It's very bulky and annoying. It doesn't have reliable recovery though. And it's incredibly slow, so it can't be taken advantage of. It's not the strongest thing in the world right off rip either. Uh, but again, Swords Dance can help that out. So I think you'll see Walrein more than you did in gen seven, but I don't think it's anything, you know, super insane as of right now Ooh, should i got some water man my throat is killing me already next up we have relicanth relicanth in tier 5 relicanth doesn't do much um it's an annoying rocker i guess um and it's decently strong i believe it also gets rock head i don't believe i think it might get head smash i don't know i'm not the most well versed when it comes to relicanth i won't lie to you but i think it'll uh it'll be chilling in tier 5 nonetheless i think the reason i don't know much about it is because it's not very good it's not drafted very often <laughs> Again, yell at me in the comments though if I'm completely wrong about Relicanth and it's been your MVP and it's carried you to a couple championships. Let me know because I could be tripping. Watch, I'm going to end up having no draft Relicanth after I just shit talk it. Um, next up, we have Mints. And I think you all know how excited I am about Mints. Um, if you guys didn't watch my video where I talked about like my, you know, top 10 mods, I'm excited for coming back. Mints was on one of them. And it's probably the mod I'm most excited to use in a Wi Fi setting. I used it in a Nat Dex League where I did get access to Hurricane, which is a new toy that I got in Air Slash and Boots. And it made this Pokemon infinitely better a lot like dragonite uh they access to boots where you don't have to worry about rocks it's great for dd sets and you know finding options to set up more often but it's also really good for bulky sets um you know with that intimidate as one of your abilities uh you can be a really really nice physical pivot and you know really soak up a lot of hits especially with uh you know that pseudo legendary bulk and being able to invest properly uh, you can be a fat fat nuisance uh you know versus a lot of things which is obviously very very dope it's very good mix it's very good as a special wall breaker a physical wall breaker a physical sweeper a bunch of different options like that and then in this dlc they decided to give it dual wing beat they decided to give men's physical flying stab which is a godsend for men's that is so good like i said dragon flying and ground uh together are very hard to deal with um from a defensive standpoint especially throughout a long game so I think, uh, you know, Mint's getting access to that dual wing beat is going to make Dragonite sets that much better, just like I said with Dragonite. Uh, it's still a very versatile Pokemon. You don't need to run boots every week, but it's obviously very nice if you don't have the best hazard removal and you want to make sure your Mint stays healthy. Uh, that's a great way to doing it. It gets access to Roost. It also gets access to Wish, which is also a very nice niche option. Great physical coverage, great special coverage. Um, it's just an overall amazing Pokemon. I think it's another Pokemon that people have definitely slept on in past generations. And I think people are going to sleep on in the beginning of this generation too because of the fact that it can't throw off that big Nuke Z fly anymore. Uh, but I really don't think that matters. I think Mens personally, and again, you can quote me on this, I think Mens is better this gen with no Z moves than it was last gen with the Axis Z moves. Just because of the nice buffs it got, you know, to replace it in boots and Hurricane slash Air slash and Dual Wing Beat and things like that. Um, and no HP ice, which is something we didn't mention for Dragonite either. So not every Mon can slap on an ice coverage move to do a ridiculous amount of damage to it. So I think Mence is an amazing Pokemon. I think people are definitely super sleeping on it, but you know, we'll see. And next up, we have my personal favorite Pokemon of all time, design wise, and a great, great steel type, especially for a good budget type in Metagross. I'm gonna put it right in tier three. Metagross is incredibly strong. It has good coverage, it has good priority, it has rocks. Um, it's a little bit slower. Uh, it doesn't have great setup options or any recovery or anything like that, but it's still very, very good. And I love Metagross. I think it's such a great glue piece. It's such a great budget steal. I wouldn't ever put it in tier two. I think there's much too many, you know, really, really strong Pokemon in tier two uh, to justify it there. But I think it's one of the best tier threes. Maybe if they give my boy shift gear though, instead of agility, they gave him shift gear. 
uh, we'll be able to talk about it a little bit differently. But for now, I'm going to put meta in tier 3. It's great with an AD. It's just a great bulky pivot. Uh, you know, it can be a strong ball breaker. Bandit's very good in some matchups. I get the boom, so you can even go get up rocks and then go boom. Custap's another very slept on set. Uh, Metagross is a great uh, agility weakness policy. can be, you know, nice in niche matchups, you know, as a setup sweeper. Uh, great Pokemon overall. People definitely sleep, but it's phenomenal. Now, we're going to talk about the Regis right here. I'm going to put Regi Rock and Regice in tier four. Both phenomenal Pokemon. Regi Rock getting extra body press is amazing. Uh, very good buff for it with that 200 base, 200 defense, honestly. It's absolutely amazing for it. It's a reliable rocker. It's a little bit slower, has mess, but death and can be exploited, uh, you know, decently by some, you know, bulkier mods, bulky waters, eat it alive. But other than that, it's still a very solid mod. It's a great low tier rocker. I think it's probably one of the best low tier rockers. So I have to give it its respect in tier four. I think it's one of the better ones. Just definitely not tier three worthy. Uh, Regice getting access to boots is very nice. Uh, obviously, Assault Vest is very nice. I like Regice a lot. Actually, it's a great spadef wall. And it does get access to, uh, I believe, Rock Polish. Some way to boost its speed, which can obviously be a pretty decent potent sweeper in the right matchups with Bolt Beam coverage and things like that. I believe it also gets Focus Blast. I believe it also gets, um, what are the moves does it get? Bolt Beam, Focus Blast. Don't remember, but it's a very solid Pokemon nonetheless. I think it's another uh, very slept on tier four. <laughs> As for Registeel. I think you got to put it in tier three. It's a little bit above the other Regis. It's very bulky. It's a great bulky steel. It can be a bit passive, but with access to seismic toss and decent coverage options to run for those monsters are going to try and, uh, you know, take advantage of you. Uh, it's obviously really good. It has access to Thunder Wave. It has access to Body Press and Iron Defense System, which is obviously very good in its own right. It has 150 in both of its defenses, so it's incredibly bulky with proper wish support, um, you know, lefties and protect and stuff like that. This thing is very hard and annoying to kill. It gets access to Curse as well, which I think is a very cool option that people definitely sleep on. And yeah, um, Registeel is a great Pokemon. I think it's, uh, you know, definitely just deserves a spot in tier three. Don't think anything made it worse to where it, uh, you know, dropped this gen. Now we have the Latios. Uh, obviously, I think Latios is a little bit better. And I think Latios actually catapults up to tier one for me this gen. Now, the reason that they both catapult up to for me is because they got access to a lot of really cool toys. They both got agility. They both got... Or sphere and mystical fire and they both got baton pass and they have pivoting options they have um, a way to boost speed other than dragon dance which is awesome and they also have coverage to hit steel and dark types which is awesome um the fact that you don't have to click earthquake with your ladios now because obviously um hidden power is gone you can't run hidden power fire anymore you can't run hidden power ground um stuff like that so mystical fire and or sphere are great for that mm, excuse me and uh, it just makes these Pokemon that much better in my honesty. I think they're uh, much better than they were last gen. I think Latios in particular is an absolute beast. It's very difficult to deal with. Nothing really wants to switch into a Life Orb, Latios, Draco, Draco Meteor. Especially when you can tag on Ors through Mystical Fire. Now it gets, they both get access to Calm Mind. They actually both get access to Stored Power. I've seen some demonic, you know, Stored Power Latios suits where it's like Agility, Weakness, Policy. Um, like Calm Mind, Stored Power because they were playing some with them Dark. So definitely want to draft a Dark type playing a Latios. Um, same thing with Latios. It's just the same as Latios, but uh, a little bit weaker and a little bit bulkier. So very solid Pokemon nonetheless, as I'm realizing my uh, my uh, green screen isn't looking too good right now. Let's just go ahead and do that. It doesn't look as good. I mean, it doesn't look as bad. It doesn't look great, but bodies are amazing Pokemon. I think we can all put Ogre, Groudon, and Ray up in Ogres. Um, you typically actually don't see Ogre allowed in Ubers draft just because Scarf Water Spout and Specs Water Spout are impossible to deal with in a draft setting. Uh, this thing's way too bulky, way too strong. Uh, it also gets access to Call Mine and things like that, so it's incredibly hard to deal with in that sense. Um, I believe I, I took over an Ubers League once uh, that had Kyogre on the team, went undefeated to win the championship just because I, besides one matchup, I brought Scarf Water Spout every time and it cleaned up the game every time ridiculous pokemon very hard to switch to groudon is very good in uber's draft it's incredibly bulky it has set up options in swords dance and rock polish it's a great rocker it's great with an assault vest it has good coverage you can go mixed just a great overall pokemon and i've tried ray and draft and ray and draft is very fun um it's incredibly fun as extra to dragon dance and swords dance for setup options extreme speed for priority it has great coverage on the physical and special side it's good anti weather options as well it can go boots now to uh guarantee not have to worry about that rock ship mixed wall breaking life orb that was by far my best set i mean uh my favorite set i remember in my bbl so folly which is the showdown version of bbl and my run will play games which i unfortunately lost but um it was a good game nonetheless remember i was uh i was mixed life orb 
Rayquaza, and I, uh, one turn, I dropped a Draco Meteor. Life Orb Draco Meteor, I killed the Zapdos for full. 100% HP, killed the Zapdos. Very bulky Pokemon. It died next turn, the Miltang came, uh, Miltang came in, thinking I can shoot it from this thing, it's minus two, and I Dragon Ascent and killed it from, like, 70. So, I think Rayquaza is ridiculously hard to deal with in Uber's Draft 2, uh, if it has the right matchup, and if it's positioned correctly, it has a mess speed tier, but if you can get it on the slower things, it's going to massacre teams, and there's not much, uh, you know, opposing teams can do about it in all honesty but for obviously uber pokemon for a reason now next up we got spirit tomb i'm gonna throw spirit tomb in tier four great dark type um obviously a phenomenal typing as well defensively doesn't really you know uh have any weaknesses outside of the fairy but it is going to be a little bit weaker it doesn't have great recovery so that you know does end up pulling it back but still a very solid no pokemon unless great priority options and sucker punch and shadow sneak both being stabbed call mind options nasty blood options uh, will o wisp I believe it actually uh, access to Hexus Gen 2, which is nice for like Willow Hex sets. Um, so Spirit Tomb's obviously a very good, uh, you know, low tier dark type. Next up, we have Garchomp. Garchomp is a tier one Pokemon. It was already a triple one Pokemon way right before. Um, obviously, Dragon plus Ground is really, really difficult to switch into. Uh, it's a great rocker. It gets access to Sword Dance, Fire Blast, and Fire Fang, and great coverage options as well. But now they gave it Scale Shot, and that's like a pseudo dragon dance if you think about it double dance guard chomp is now a thing you can swords dance into scale shot kill something and then get plus one speed and then pretty much sweep through your opponent's team which is terrifying to deal with um absolutely terrifying now guard chomp also is a great rocker like i said and it's also a great you know defensible to pivot with rust scan plus rocky helmet a lot of a lot of physical threats can just be checked by chomp by doing that alone also gets access to endure which can be very very scary in either an offensive or defensive setting with a rocky helmet or with like a salic barrier or something like that so definitely something very very scary that you have to keep into mind our chomp is incredibly potent offensively and it's very tough to deal with now next up we have evire and magmortar and it's tough because I think they both have great utility and they're both enjoy I enjoy both of them um, a lot. But they're Pokemon you often see bounce between tier four and five. I'm gonna put them in tier four for the benefit of the doubt, being it's a limited dex. There isn't as much crazy stuff in the game right now uh, because of no megas and a couple months that didn't make it back, but they're still not great. Um, they're a bit slower. They don't have great defensive typings. They're checked by a lot of, uh, you know, very common things, but they're very good in specific niche matchups and they have great utility. So I think putting them in tier four is definitely fair. Um, as for the Lake Spirits, I put them in this order personally. Now, Mesprit is uh, like the Jack of all trades, master of none type thing, where it can do both what a uh, Azelf and Uxie both do in being, you know, decently offensive, uh, having good coverage, and potentially being that annoying psychic, bulky pivot and stuff like that. Uxie is definitely the more defensive one if you want a good trick room setter, if you want a good, you know, rocker, um, you know, that really, really fat psychic. Uxie is your guy for sure and then azelf is the all-out offensive one with 125 in both of its attack stats 115 speed nasty plot and good physical coverage and u-turn and explosion and taunt and stuff like that it's much more for the hyper offensive player uh i prefer azelf the most just because that's kind of the play style i lean towards i've had great success with azelf in the past i think it's a great pokemon if you can use it well and position it well and you know bring the right set for the right matchup and stuff like that but I think Uxie and Mesper are both great. I love all the, uh, the Lake Spirits. I think they're all great Pokemon, their respective tiers. It's just, this is where I would put them personally. Um, I know a lot of people don't really like Azelf in draft, but I think it's a great Pokemon nonetheless. Now, right back up into Ubers we go. Dialga is bulky and annoying and never dies and it kills everything. Palkia is bulky and annoying and never dies and it kills everything. Um, Palkia Rain sounds like a lot of fun to draft. I know Silver drafted Palkia Rain once and got like 27 kills with it. I've drafted Dialga before. Um, and had a lot of success with it. I've played against a Dialga before and it's very hard to deal with. Um, Scarf is great, Specs is great, Life Orb, Shookaberry, Chapel. Um, it never dies in one hit. So you pretty much always at least get to trade one for one with Dialga, which is obviously very, very valuable. Next up, Heatran, right in tier one. Heatran was already tier one Pokemon. No hidden power was great for it, which is obviously, uh, you know, really helping out with that four times ground weakness, which people, you know, often kind of shit on Heatran for. But I think it's really solid nonetheless, even if there are hidden power in the game. But now that obviously just makes it even better. And now it can also run Timid Eruption. Eruption was a move, uh, was an event move that Heatran got access to before. But now it can run Timid with the uh, Timid or Modest or whatever nature you want to run with your Eruption um, due to the Nature Mints. So obviously Timid Eruption Heatran is very, very difficult to switch into. I have run Scarf Heatran a lot. I've drafted a lot in that dice leads and it's very difficult to deal with. So I think Heatran is definitely a very scary Pokemon for sure. Uh, Regigigas, still a tier five Pokemon. I understand it got uh, Protect and, you know, things like that. 
a leaf rest as well uh, which can make it to where you can still cheese with it but it's still not a very good pokemon it still takes a lot to get going and oftentimes you don't have that time in a pokemon game against a competent player so we're gonna put it in tier five uh, as i'm kind of speeding up i apologize because i'm realizing i'm 40 minutes through and i still have like like a third of them left uh next up giratina and ubers both forms very good uh one of them's more offensive or one of them's more bulky they're both very bulky though and they're both very very annoying uh to deal with Next up, we have Crest. I'm going to put Crest in tier 2 because it got Cosmic Power and it got Stored Power. So now if you don't have a Dark type, you lose to Cresselia. Um, unless you're a smart player and you bring Taunt and you bring Toxic and things like that. Um, Crest is a very annoying Pokemon to deal with. It's another Pokemon a lot like Suicune that newer players often have a lot of trouble with because of how ridiculously bulky it is. They don't realize how passive it is and how uh, it can be exploited and taken advantage of. But I think it's at least tier 2 right now. Um, I could change my mind later. Personally, I would never draft it in tier two, but I think you at least have to put it there just because of the sheer bulk that it has and, uh, you know, the prep that it does force, um, at the very least. It's kind of like a scuff so you can, I guess, in that way. Um, next up, we have Victini. Victini is a tier one Pokemon. It's incredibly versatile, Scarf and Bandit and Specs and, you know, mixed Life Orb and just special Life Orb and stuff like that. Um, Expert Belt. So many great offensive options. And now you have access to boost. You don't have to worry about rocks anymore which is so nice on Victini because that is one of the ways you slow down Victini is you force out a bunch and you get up rocks and you chip it down throughout the game and then it can't be as big of a threat because uh, if it V creates, it loses speed and loses defenses, which usually does end up forcing out to the subsequent thing that comes in. And, you know, if it has to switch out, come in and take rocks again, you're limiting it, switching it, it's, you know, a little bit easier to deal with. Now with Boots, you don't got to worry about that as much. Uh, you don't have to, you know, prioritize getting those rocks off the field, which is obviously great. Next up, Audino. Audino is a tier four Pokemon. As much as I like it to put it in uh, tier 5 to really piss off John, I don't think I can viably do so. Uh, it's a great Wish Passer, it's a great Cleric, um, it's a great Regenerate Pivot. It's incredibly passive, so you do have to be very careful with Audino. You can be taken advantage of and exploited with it. But I think a smart player can use Audino well. I can be a great glue and, you know, backbone to a, you know, a nice, like, budget, you know, bulky mod to uh, glue together a team and stuff like that. And, you know, provide that support that it really does need. Caracosta. Tier 5 Pokemon, in my personal opinion, it's pretty bulky with solid rock. It can get up rocks. It can shell smash in specific niche matchups, even though it's incredibly slow as is. It gets access to priority in Aqua Jet. Decent Pokemon, just uh, I think it's in Tier 5 for sure. Archaeops, I think, is a Tier 4 Pokemon. I think it's a very good Tier 4, especially with Boots. It's a lot easier to play around than Defeatus now, and when it's not in Defeatus, it's incredibly strong and it's incredibly threatening offensively. It got access to Dual Wing Beat as well, which is great for its flying stab options. It also got access to, uh, it also has access to rocks. It's just a very, very annoying mod to deal with. I had Archaeops and I believe it was IBL season five or six. The first season I played there in gen seven and it was great for me as my Z cap in there. And I think losing Z really does kind of shaft Archaeops a bit, but I don't think it, you know, like absolutely murders them all or makes it bad or anything like that. I um, just think it makes it a little bit worse. Uh, I still think it's great though. I think people, uh, you know, definitely will find great value out of it in tier four. Draft it. Now, Cryogonal. Cryogonal is a tier 4 Pokemon in my opinion as well. Boots is a great option. It gets Rabbit Spin and Defog, which is one of the very few mobs to get that, which is actually pretty cool. Um, it does get stuffed by Steels. It's very frail uh, physically though. It has a decent speed tier though. Uh, it's a pretty solid Pokemon. The only thing is just being hardballed by Steels, which are often going to be rockers. Makes it a pretty subpar spinner in my personal opinion. Just because the monster it's going to spin. Uh, it's gonna, you know, spin away the rocks from, are gonna switch hard in on it anyways, and then just get up rocks again, uh, putting you back in that cycle and putting you in a pretty tough spot. Uh, so, not the best spinner in the world, but also not the Alex. Worse. Now, for the genies, um, I'm gonna talk about both forms. I'm gonna put them in their highest tier based on their forms. If we're talking Torn T, tier 1 for Tornadoes. Now, obviously, Torn I isn't tier 1, I think it would be a tier 2 Pokemon. Uh, Torn T, though, is going to be ridiculous with regen plus boots and a nasty plot with its coverage and obviously its utility that I already had. Talked about it in another video, that top 10 video that I made, uh, you know, a week or two ago. But Torn is going to be an absolute menace, very tough to deal with. Both Thundies will be in tier 1 just because they're very strong, uh, incredibly powerful Pokemon. And they're going to struggle with hitting ground types now, but they both get access to U turn. Specs and Scarf sets are scary, scary. agility sets are terrifying. Nasty plot sets are terrifying. They both get access to grass, not to hit ground. So depending on the ground, you can't still hit them despite no hidden power. Uh, very, very good Pokemon. Torn T, I mean Torn, uh, Thundy Eye, obviously with Prankster Defog and then Torn uh, Thundy T with that Volt Absorb option. Both very, very solid. Now Landorus, I'm gonna talk about Lando T. Lando Eye is definitely an Uber Pokemon. 
Uh, in my opinion, I know a lot of leagues allow it not dex just because there's a lot more things. I think in a Galardic setting, I don't think you can allow a Sheer Force Lando T, uh, Lando I ever. It's just ridiculously strong. Lando T, we're gonna put in tier one though, just because of the fact that it's such a good blue Pokemon. No Hidden Power Ice means it's not as easy to slap on a coverage spoof on every Pokemon on your team for it. Um, Sword Stance and Rock Polish and Double Stance are still definitely a thing. It's a great rocker. It's a great pivot and U-turn. It gets Defog, it gets Explosion. It gets so many options. Lando T is one of my favorite monsters to use in draft, and I think it's still incredibly good this gem, despite people thinking that Z makes it, no Z makes it uh, bad or uh, worse than Gliscor, as some would say. Um, I think it's still incredibly solid, uh, in my personal opinion. Now, Genesect, Uber Pokemon, great coverage, great pivot, really hard to switch into. Kind of like zooming over the Ubers right now, sorry. Uh, but we have Tyrantrum next up. Uh, very, very solid Pokemon. I think I'm going to put it in tier 3, though. Very potent to switch into offensively. Um, okay, cool. Everything's still on the screen. Very hard to switch into offensively. Uh, it's cut, it's stabs plus, um, what do you call it, like ground and fighting coverage is gross. It also got access to close combat, which is incredibly more, much more spammable than like a superpower, which I have before, so it would also run Earthquake. Close combat is just a stronger option than those in most matchups. And it can be very scary in a Dragon Dance setting, in a Rock Polish, or in a um, Scarf, you know, kind of set. Really makes Tyrantrum very difficult to deal with. You can even run fat physically defensive Tyrantrum, which I have done before. Uh, and it can work to decent success if you really need that flying resist or something like that. It can definitely help out a bunch. Aurorus, ah, I didn't mean to do that. Ah. Aurorus, I think, is probably a tier 5 Pokemon, in personal opinion. It didn't get Aurora Veil, which is like a crime. It gets Snow Warning, and his name is Aurorus, and it didn't get Aurora Veil. Uh, when other Pokemon did, so definitely, uh, Aurora's got the short end of the stick right there. It can be decently strong, it's a de decently okay wall breaker with snow warning and blizzards and, uh, you know, refrigerate hyper voices as well. Definitely lots of options in that vein. It's just a little bit slower and then it has some really crippling four times weaknesses in fighting and ground. Harbink, yet another- I don't know why I put this over here. It's not, it's not figured all Sorry, right, you're there first. Sorry, guy. Um, next up we have Aurora's- I mean, uh, Harbink. Another Pokemon, it's decent, I guess. You can get a Rocks. It's very passive offensively, but it gets screens, it gets boom. So, in like an HO setting, if you need like a low tier, um, you know, reliable screen setter, Carving is definitely your guy. It can be very annoying. Xerneas is broken, even without Geomancing and Draft. It's disgusting. Yveltal is broken, and now it gets boots, so it doesn't die ever. Zygarde, tier one Pokemon, baby. Um, let me scroll up a little bit. Awesome. Tier 1 Pokemon. Um, I love Zygarde. It's one of the most successful mods I've ever used in the draft setting. Uh, no Hidden Power Ice means this thing gets free setup on literally anything without Ice Beam. Um, <laughs> like, this thing doesn't die. I think that Zygarde is absolutely amazing. Bandit's Death is still great. Um, it got access to Scale Shot, which is a little bit, uh, you know, safer of an option. It's weaker, but it's safer of an option than Outrage on, like, Dragon Dance sets or Bandit sets and things like that. It can definitely clean through some teams. E-Speed for priority, Thousand Arrows is one of the most busted moves in the games. Coil and Dragon Dance and Subtoxic sets are great. Thousand Waves to trap things in. I think Thousand Waves is the trapping one. Um, get Sludge Wave for, you know, some physically defensive fat grasses if you want to catch those on the Switch and things like that. So, I really do think Zygarde's an absolutely amazing Pokemon. Uh, in the right hands, in the right position, if you build around it correctly, it is a very difficult Pokemon to deal with um, in a lot of, uh, you know, potential leagues and stuff like that. Deancey! Is it tier four Pokemon? I the NC is a very good tier four Pokemon. I almost I almost wanted to put it in tier three, but I think all the Pokemon in tier three are definitely better. Um, the NC is a good low tier fairy. It's a l good low tier rocker and flying resist. It does get access to obviously Stealth Rocks and then Earth Power to hit Steels. It also got access to Mystical Fire, which is really nice for Mega DNC, but it's nice for regular DNC as well. Um, it got access to Play Rust if you want to be a more physical set, which definitely. An option with this thing, just a great low tier rocker in my personal opinion, and uh, can really be a nuisance. It also gets access to Trick Room, so it can be a good Trick Room sweeper. Um, it also gets access to Rock Polish, so if you have a Rock Polish matchup, you can definitely do so there. So, I think that DNC is definitely very solid, uh, for sure. Volcanion, tier 2 Pokemon, Boots make it uh, a little bit easier to get it onto the field. Steam Eruption plus Flamethrower is very hard to switch into, it also gets access to Sludge Wave. Um, it also can uh, defog for itself, which is obviously super, super clutch. I believe it gets access to Flame Charge. Um, some Toxic sets are also very good. Volcanion's a very good slept on Pokemon. It's hard to fit in a lot of teams, but when you do fit it on, it's pretty solid um, for sure. Ah, I scrolled down too much. Coco, tier one Pokemon, if not banned in draft, if you are allowing Rising Voltage. So Coco, 
uh, was the benefactor of so much this gen. It got flavor for physical fairy stat. It got close combat. It got um, stored power, so you can beat Nitos and things like that, which is obviously really, really nasty. It already had access to Calm Mind and uh, Iron Defense and Roost and Defog and U-Turn and Volt Switch and Thunderbolt and Dazzling Gleam and all that stuff. And then they gave it Rising Voltage. And uh, if you don't know what Rising Voltage does, it is a special um, electric move that has 70 base power that actually uh, doubles an electric train. And when you auto set train for yourself, you have a 140, not including stab move, um, just to throw it off and just to throw off for free. No drawback. Stronger than Thunder, you just throw it off. No drawback, which is insane. Absolutely insane. Also gets access to Grass Knot and Dual Screens. Coco, in my opinion, if it is allowed in uh, a Galar deck setting in leagues, will be the best Pokemon. Whether you ban Rising Voltage or not, it will be the best Pokemon in the format. By far. It, it definitely will be. I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. It's incredibly versatile. Um, if you uh, do allow it, best Pokemon. If not, I can even see a lot of leagues banning it, especially off RIP initially. Or it could even be like, we'll try it, and then leagues realize how broken it is in the right player's hands, and they ban it. Same thing with Lele. Now, before um, the DLC, we knew that it was getting expanding force. I would even say that this thing is like a low-end tier one, maybe tier two Pokemon because of the um, Psychic Terrain nerf. It got pretty severely nerfed in the damage output that it had. Has a mess speed tier, but now it got access to expanding force, which is going to be the rising voltage of electric terrain, and that is ridiculous. I think specs expanding force to it KOs max HP Heatran. Which is disgusting. It still gets access to Focus Blast and Psychic and Psy Shock and Moon Blast and stuff like that. It's very hard to switch into Psychic plus Fairy um, coverage unless you're a Steel type. And like I said, Focus Blast can deal with that. And Expanding Force can honestly muscle its way through a lot of teams. It's going to be very hard to deal with Scarf and Specs. Expanding Force, if it is allowed in a standard setting, I think that it should be. Personally, I don't think it's the most broken thing in the world, especially with the uh, terrain nerf. It's uh, a little bit weaker than like Lele overall. And Gen 7, in my opinion, I think Gen 7 Lele was insane just because of how strong terrain was back then. Um, but it's still a very solid Pokemon unless. And still on the Tapu Hype Train, Tapu Bulu, Tier 1 Pokemon, got Play Rough finally. I love Play Rough Bulu. I've used it myself. Phenomenal. It is an actual fairy type now. It got close combat and high horsepower, which is obviously great as well. And then they gave it Grassy Glide. So now you have priority. You have priority on top of your Horn Leech and your Wood Hammer options. Um, Bulu is just better real of them. That's it. Blue is just better Rillaboom. I know it doesn't get that pivoting option, um, and I know it doesn't get Swords Dance, but it gets bulk up, and it's just a lot bulkier. It has a better defensive typing, and it is a lot better overall, in my opinion. It can hit Flying Times with Stone Edge, which Boom cannot do. I prefer Blue one 100% over Rillaboom, especially in a draft setting. When it comes to standard Smogon, I don't know how they match up against the metagame personally, but I think at least in a draft setting, Blue is much, much better. Now, Feeny, also a tier one Pokemon. Didn't get as many cool tune toys as the other ones, but it did get Flip Turn, which I think is really, really nice for it, making it a nice pivot, making AV Feeny a lot better as well. Um, and then it also got Draining Kiss, which is really cool for, you know, annoying setup stored power sets with like Iron Defense, Calm Mind, Draining Kiss, Stored Power. Like, that's very hard to deal with in a lot of matchups. Just because of how bulky this thing is, the fact that you can't status it, at least until its terrain runs out, uh, can be a really potent setup threat um for a lot of you know fatter builds to try and deal with in all honesty so i think that's obviously super dope neeligo is a tier two pokemon it's a very good rocker it's a very good um you know scarfer as well if you set up a correct you know a proper end game with four neeligo to click power gem through a team or sludge wave through a team it can definitely do so it has good coverage it has foul play for utility t spikes and rocks which is obviously dope there's overall a very very good pokemon in my opinion Buzzwool, also tier two. It got close combat this gen, so it has a more spammable fighting stat for offensive sets. Still has Drain Punch for defensive sets. Um, bulk up options. It has access to Roost. It has a uh, good, uh, good physical coverage options as well. Very solid Pokemon. It's incredibly slept on in my opinion. It doesn't get drafted very often, but it's very tough to deal with because uh, you don't know if that really fat defensive set is coming, or you don't know if like Banded or Scarfed is coming in. It's gonna throw off big Ice Punches and close combats and Leech Lifes and things like that. Um, so very, very solid Pokemon for sure. Fermosa is an uber Pokemon. It's very strong. I uh, use Fermosa my, myself recently in a league. I got like 20 kills with it. Very, very fun Pokemon. If you can cover the priority options, if you can cover the Scarfer options, stuff like that, be smart. It's a phenomenal pit. Uh, it's a phenomenal ball breaker. It just breaks through teams like nobody's business. It has such a good move pool. Really fun Pokemon to use. Circuitry. I'm also going to put in tier 2. I know a lot of people put Zerk in tier 3 at the end of Gen 7. I think it's very slept on. It gets Energy Ball for grounds. Thunderbolt to break through literally everything else around. Dragon, uh, dragons get hit by Dazzling Gleam. 
Tail Glow makes it very scary. It gets um, access to um, Tail Glow. Like I said, you can run like Salak Berry sets. I believe it gets Endure as well, or at least gets it in this DLC. One of the two, I'm pretty sure it gets Endure. Um, and I think in the right matchup, Zerkatry can actually be a big, big, big threat um, to a lot of teams. Now, Celesteel going to be another one of the best Pokemon in the format again. Not only does it have all the things that I had last gen, and, you know, being annoying with Leech Seeds and, you know, sub Leech sets and stuff like that. Leech Protect sets. Um, Autotomize three attack sets, you know, often sets to break through. Though it doesn't have Zemu, so the sets aren't as good, in my opinion, in Gen 8. Um, it also got access to Cosmic Power. Now you can boost up to where your Cell Steel just don't die. Uh, you could be Restock, you could be Leech plus Cosmic Power and just really sit in front of everything in the world because the grasses that would absorb your Leech Seeds are going to get blown back by your Heavy Slams and Air Slashes and Flamethrowers and can't touch you because you're a flying Steel type and you don't care about no grass types. So I think Cell Steel is obviously an amazing Pokemon. Um, it's incredibly versatile and it getting Cosmic Power just makes it that much better. Now, here comes Cardana. Cardana is very strong. It's just as strong as it was last gen. No Z move capabilities. It's a bit unfortunate to hit those mods like kind of wall of before, like the Zapdos is the world and things like that. But SD is still a very, very potent sweeper. Um, uh, I mean, uh, Breaker Scarf is a great sweeper. Uh, you can really get out of hand fast that like 181 attack stat and just, you know, being fast and everything and cleaving through. And it got Grassy Glide. So I think Blue Cart combinations or even Boom Cart um, could be very, very terrifying to deal with. Because if you're throwing off a plus two, um, what do you call it? Priority grass stab move. Uh, that's going to be very hard to deal with when you're playing Cartana. If you have something that you're, if your way of checking it is like an offensive scarf that outspeeds, there's no other guy. It's going to be very tough to deal with it. If it's throwing off priority moves in, uh, instead. Next up, we have Guzzlord. Going to put Guzzlord in tier four. Definitely a very solid Pokemon. I think it has very good coverage. I think it's great with an AV. Um, it's just that four times fairy weakness really holds it back. It has pretty mad both despite its massive HP stat. It's, uh, you know, actual defensive stats are pretty mad though. If invested correctly, can be very, very solid. Has good coverage. It's just very slow and can be overwhelmed very often. So it's uh, often a better idea to draft a different uh, dragon. Next up, we have Naga Dell, which is going to be an Uber Pokemon. Not only does Naga still have access to Nasty Plot, plus it stabs and Flamethrower slash Fire Blast, not only can it choose which beast boost it wants to get, whether it be speed or special attack, depending on what set you are, not only does it still have U-Turn, they also gave Naga Spikes and Toxic Spikes. Which is gross for a mom that forces as many switch-ins as Naga Nadal does, especially when teams are trying to avoid giving it that beast boost so it doesn't run through their team. Uh, spikes and T-Spikes on this thing is going to be absolutely amazing because you don't have to run Nasty Plot every week. You can run like Life Orb sets and stuff like that and just get up a spike on the switch that the rest of your team can really, you know, put on a lot of pressure. Or you can put on a lot of pressure because something might not, something might be able to take two Sludge Rays without a, a spike in Rocks up. But if you get those up and they get two bit KO'd, Naga's looking a lot more threatening. So I think that's obviously super dope. Stack Attacka, um, it's tough for Stack Attack. I never want to to put this thing because I've never drafted it myself. Where would I put? I would put Stack in three. Um, I understand some people might think it's a lot better. It does get access to Trick Room. It can be a very potent Trick Room sweeper. It got access to Body Press, which is very good for defensive sets and you know a good way of hitting you know Steel types and things like that. Um, it can be very very annoying defensively and offensively. It's just there's a lot of steel types I'd rather have that are a little bit more reliable and don't have that four times weakness to ground and fighting. Now I know this thing isn't dropping to straight earthquakes and things like that just because of how bulky it is, but stab ones definitely hurt and then special moves definitely it does not you know appreciate taking. So I'm gonna put it in tier three and then for the last Pokemon we have. We have Blacephalon, and I'm going to put Blacephalon in tier one. Now, Blaze was held back a lot last gen, um, literally by the presence of Pursuit. If your opponent had a Pokemon with Pursuit, your Blacephalon was essentially useless. It was getting Pursuit trapped. Now, it can come in and out as it pleases. Does not have to worry about that kind of stuff. So now you can throw off a big Fire Blast with no drawback. Not have to worry about getting trapped by the T-Tar in the back. Not have to worry about getting trapped by the Umbreon. Because they come in, you can just switch out, which is... Phenomenal. It also got access to Flare Blitz um, in uh, the, what do you call it, in the new uh, TRs and stuff like that. So I think that's also a very solid option for it to go mixed against a lot of very scary special walls, which is dope. And still that potent special wall break. It still has access to Calm Mind. Uh, it's still very good Pokemon. I believe it also, I believe it also got, um, did it get Poltergeist? No, it didn't because I remember John thought it did and he tried to run it once and didn't get it. Um, I'm pretty sure it didn't. But it can be mixed a little bit easier now to deal with those big threats. And this is a very, very good Pokemon. So 
I think Blacephalon is actually a lot better than Shen, literally just by Pursuit being out of the game. Uh, I think it really did benefit from that, as did most other ghost types, because it's just kind of free to click Shadow Ball and Fire Blast now. But uh, yeah, that's going to be our tier list. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you disagree? Do you agree with me completely and wholeheartedly? If you do, shouts out to you. I, pre I Good job having great opinions. But if not, it's is also completely fine. I'm joking. I'm probably definitely completely wrong about all these things. This is definitely a very personally biased list and things that I like and don't like and stuff like that. Um, I will say, out of all the, these Pokemon coming back, there's very few that I think are bad and that I don't like. Um, I think these are all great Pokemon. I think it's really great for the draft format that they're coming back. Uh, really diversifying the um, the Wi-Fi scene and, you know, really shaking up what's allowed and stuff like that, what top tier teams can use, especially in the tier one, tier two area, uh, especially tier one in all honesty. Tier one, tier three look like to be the biggest winners out of this for me. Um, there's a lot more top tier mons to build around, which I felt was very much so lacking in, uh, you know, prior metagames in Sword and Shield on Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So I'm very excited. Um, I hope you guys are too. Be sure to like the video if you haven't done so already. Definitely drop a sub as well. Like I said, we're on our way to 400 and I'd really appreciate it if you'd help me out. And yeah, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Later.